Today, we'll be looking at the man who really stopped the killing of twins in Nigeria. Well, they told you Mary Slessor stopped the killing of twins, but that's not totally true. King Ayo Honesty II made the declaration to stop the killing. Most people have not heard this story before. King Ayo Honesty II ended the brutal practices such as the killing of twins, human sacrifice and the immolation of slaves upon the death of an important person. Killing newborn babies was a common practice during the pre-colonial times among the Ibibio and Efik people of Nigeria until it was eliminated by an indigenous king in the 19th century whose name has since been replaced by Mary Slessor. In the pre-colonial and early colonial period, the birth of twins in some areas in the region that would later be known as Nigeria, particularly the Efik and some part of Igbo land, was considered a bad omen and an abomination that could bring devastation or calamity upon the society. Because of this, the native often abandoned the twin's baby in the forest to die. This practice continued until the 19th century when a progressive king by the name King Ayo Honesty eliminated the practice and declared no twins should be killed. King Ayo Honesty II was born in 1788 to Princess Inyang Essien Ekbe and Ayo Honesty I of Creek Town. His father Ayo Honesty I was a wealthy trader. In his youth, Ayo worked as a cabin boy under English captain during the era of the transatlantic slave trade. He was taxed with carrying messages back and forth between officers and the rest of the crew who occupied different parts of the ship and oftentimes accompanied them in their voyage to West Indies and England. It was during his time that he learned to speak and write the English language. He also learned the inside and out of the slave trade business and how to trade with Europeans. After his stint as a cabin boy, Ayo became an interpreter and acted as a middleman between the local merchants and the Europeans. He continued on his pathway until the death of his father. Following the death of his father, his younger brother, Ekpeyong Nsan, was crowned the new king for Creek Town, where Ayo dropped his interpretation gig and ventured into the more lucrative transatlantic slave trade, brokering and selling slaves on behalf of others and himself. According to his descendants, many chiefs would usually keep their slaves, most of them bought from distant places such as Cross River, South East, etc., in the custody of Ayo Honesty for the white buyers. Ayo Unsan continued on the pathway of selling Africans for profit to Europeans until the British made the trade illegal in 1807. After the British banned slave trade, King Ayo ventured into the business of selling palm oil to the white businessmen, and in time he became even more wealthier than he was when he was trading slaves. Ayo, who later took the mantle of leadership in 1835 after his brother King Ekpenyo Nsan died. After his coronation, King Ayo Honesty II, who firmly believed that his route to Western civilization was through Western education, he set out to modernize the old Calabar society by introducing those Western ideas and practices he believed would make his people co compete favorably with the Europeans. He signed the Anti-Slave Trade Treaty with the British for the suppression of the practice of slave trade in Old Calabar and also sent letters to the British requesting for teachers and missionaries to Old Calabar to establish schools and teach the people. His requests were heeded to and the first missionaries arrived at Old Calabar in April 1846. Upon their arrival, Ayo was cited saying 
now I am sure God will love and bless me for I am very glad you come with this book. King Eyo Honesty II will later eliminate brutal practices such as the killing of twins, human sacrifices and the immolation of slaves upon the death of an important person in most of Calabar. By the last decade of King Eyo's reign, British involvement in several aspects of, of ethnic social cultural life was evident. Christianity was spreading and the people were becoming more modernized. Although King Eyo was happy with some of the changes that came with the British missionaries, he protested their interference in matters of state and also never converted to the white man's religion. King Eyo died on the 3rd of December 1858. Although he is termed as a Christian king, King Eyo never converted to Christianity and adhered to customs which he believed were unharmful to Christian doctrine. Mary Slessor would later come in the picture in 1876, 18 years after King Eyo Honesty's death and settled in the same village called Okoyong. In Okoyong, Mary Slessor went around pre preaching the gospel of Christian and also enlightening and educating natives. She also saved many of twins from forests where they have been left either to die or eaten by animals by people who refused to listen to the king's decree and still practiced the old ways and took them into her mission home. In time, the story of this white woman became ambiguous to the extent that it deemed the light of the man who played a major role in the elimination of the barbaric practice killing of twins in most Calabar land. As time went on, stories were told and books were written about the great white woman who went around saving twins from the forest of Okoyo. In time, King Eyo Honester II, the man responsible for making the law to stop elimination of twins infanticide in most of Calabar, was kicked to oblivion and his name swapped with that of Mary Slessor who helped enforce the end of the practice. Till this day, Mary Slessor is still regarded as the person who ended the killing of twins in the entire Calabar and is also taught in Nigerian schools. If a stranger writes your history, they are always going to write it in a way that glorifies only them. This is where we end today's edition of Motherland. Please encourage us by liking and subscribing to our channel. See you on our next episode.